Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22. It's time for round 7 of our Moto E career mode, it's time for Aston, it's time for the Dutch GP. So here we go then, in pole position in one of my most favourite tracks, so this is going to be a good one and away we go. Hector Gartho got a great start there on the right hand side, there is Cassidy and even Jordi Torres, we're up against it with the AI in this one it seems. So into the first corner we got a little bit of contact from uh, Torres behind and then a bit of contact with Cassidy. As I just was a little bit hesitant there because we got caught on the rumble strip. Uh, tends to find that when you bring the acceleration the bike starts to scream and there's really no grip on those curbs. So unfortunately getting pushed backwards here but I will go for my favourite lunge into Struben. We do manage to regain fourth position and now it's time for us to really Start getting into the thick of things. The AI always starts out strong simply because it's a little bit of an advantage to the AI. When you actually hold the acceleration, it doesn't let you start until maybe like a good half a second until the light has actually gone out. If you try it, you'll know that every single time you seem to be a little bit later than the AI. But it's nothing to worry about. We're still absolutely on it and I adore this circuit. So I'm feeling very confident in the cathedral of motorbikes. So now into the left hand side for Debolt, a corner I always seem to struggle at, whether it's uh, Superbike, MotoGP, Moto2, Moto3, Debolt is always a corner that just seems to catch me off guard and never understand why, but I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out throughout this couple of Grand Prix that we have here in Assen. So now bringing the power on from turn 12, we're in pursuit of Dominic Egeter. Well this is where I think we're going to really be able to close in on the AI. They, uh, they slow down a little bit from the ram shot. Oh my goodness! Tia Cassidy has gone down, so it's now as us to take advantage of uh, Dominic Egerton going pretty slow for the gear to Chicane. And now we have an opportunity to take the battle to Hector Garth. Oh, there's Egerton back up on the inside. As the heart rate is uh, relatively stable at 104 right now. So now breaking into the right hand side, keep it in nice and tight as we go for Harbock for turn one. And now back over to turn two. Got to be careful upon the acceleration here. I took a gamble with the medium tyre. The game recommended to use, I think it was a medium front and then possibly a hard rear, but I felt quite confident with the medium amongst the practice and the qualifying. So with that said, we come out of Strubbing quite hot by Hector Gartho, the man we beat in Magello. is looking quite strong himself. So of course, guys, if you are enjoying the content, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. You don't have to, but it does help out the channel, and of course it keeps you up to date with all of the latest Dot Race content. So now into the right-hand side for Steckenvall for turn 8. Ooh, Egito was really close there. The AI just favour a different line to what we do, but we'll go firm on the brakes with DeBolt and try and get this corner right. I still don't like my entry there. Bit wide and caught onto the rumble strip. I'm so hesitant when we get caught on the rumble strips. From playing on Superbike 22 and now in Moto E, the curbs are not your friend and there we are back on the curbs again got to try and heed my own advice here is Egeter carried a lot of speed as we approach this 12th corner here in Assen just a lap two already and this is going to really fire up in a moment will Egeter be lining a lunge up there he is up on the inside but will he line a lunge up going into the Timisha Kane not quite much stronger than what we were this time around though he could potentially get us for turn one in a moment's time, fastest man on circuit is Hector Gartho. We were only there, well, down by a tenth of a second, bang on. So not exactly losing time, a smidge of time, but not exactly when we consider we did make a small mistake. I'm sure if we just get things right and tidy it up a little bit, we will be on the tail of the number four very, very soon. A bit deep for the turn four there. Egerton is still two tenths of a second behind the man. On the Dynavolt Liquimoli Moto e-bike is approaching. He is uh, desperate to keep his championship hopes alive. Of course, we had a brilliant string of podiums recently from the double seconds in Le Mans to satisfaction, victory in Mugello, and then a second place as well. So four podiums in a row for the man on your screen right now. So we're looking pretty promising at this stage of the uh, Moto e career mode. And I think what's most important is the AI have not been consistent. We've had that consistency. A lot of riders are crashing out. Takari Akubu is still holding in there in second place in the championship. But right now he's down in fifth place for the Grand Prix. So he needs to take points away from us rather than just taking what he can get. So 
For now, out to Duke Sloot for turn 11. This is the fast right-hander. Eggert is not close this time around after doing a better job into DeBolt. Gaining three tenths of a second to the Spaniard ahead of us. We can now go to the left-hand side. The heart rate monitor just increasing somewhat as we go firm on the anchors for the penultimate corner here for the Kirtan to Chicane. Then back over to the left for 17. Here we go. This is going to be a 139 lap, ladies and gentlemen. It is. It's a 139.767 as we go firm on the brakes for the first corner. Oh, he could be bold enough to go for the lunge here. It's close. We made it stick. Lap four. Your championship leader has taken the advantage. But Hector Garso is not letting this go without a fight. He's still there. He wants to get on through. Got to give him the space. But he's just set us up beautifully for a lunge into Struben. Thank you very much, Hector. Pushing him a little bit wide. But he goes around the outside. Excellent racing from the number four. Four versus 47 right now. As we'll try and go around the outside ourselves. It's going to be a difficult braking marker. Oh, he's on the grass. He was briefly on the grass there. And look at this. The lap times have not even suffered. Quite a, an intense battle in the mid-stages of this Grand Prix here in Assen. A championship points. Massive points are up for grabs here. Garza wants to get his championship challenge underway. Of course, he will be riding with aggression and passion today. After losing out in the victory in Mugello, you know he wants to get the victory here in Assen. But I'll tell you what, I think I want it a little bit more. I love the circuit of Assen. It's one of my favourites, if not the favourite. I've got to win this one. And at this stage, getting caught the rumble strip a little bit there, but still looking rather promising. Now, will the AI go for this lunge? There he is, up on the inside. Forced me to lift it up a little bit, but we are strong on the brakes. He can't be that bold or brazen to go for a lunge there. Well, he made contact. As there is yellow flags out behind us, but thankfully it was nothing to do with the contact made with Hector Garso just then. So this is the point. Do we break away from the Spaniard behind? We are strong into turn one. It always have been. And the AI is lacking. We could have already won this one at this stage of the Grand Prix, ladies and gentlemen. Five and a half tenths of a second. If it reaches a second, you break the resolve of the rider behind you. And that could especially be happening here in Assen. A track that, well, it does offer a lot of overtaking opportunities. But if you lose that toe, you're going to ride like us, bombing in the front, churning out the lap times. It's going to make life very difficult for Hector behind. So now into the rushing up for turn seven. Good change of direction is required here for turn eight. Bit deep. It's not a problem, but I do prefer that tighter apex. You can see now in the graphic in the top right hand corner of your screen, we did lose two tenths after that small moment. So could have tidied that up a little bit better, but it's not a problem. We're still absolutely on it, and we are bound to improve our lap time if things stays the same. Hector Garso has got to think of something quickly here. Two tenths of a second separate us and our fastest lap time. At least uh, it was, but it's now dropped down to four tenths. And Garso still in it. Six tenths of a second. It all come down to that first turn. But Mikel Pons. He has been charging through the order. He was down to seventh earlier on. It's a podium finish and even better for our LCRE teammate. Or at least one of two teammates. Pons is up there in the top two. Brilliant, brilliant pace right now. Is he going to be anywhere near our fastest lap time? It doesn't seem it. But he has taken some time away from us. Is Mikel Pons going to be sharing a podium with us for the first time this season? I believe we've shared once with Eric Granado in Le Mans. But I don't think we've shared it with Mikel Pons. I may be wrong there, but I don't believe I am. Mikel Pons having a terrific race so far. He's one of the riders this season who's not been consistent. Lots of crashes and lots of mistakes. And speaking of mistakes, that was a little bit too deep for Struben. Lost, uh, lost about three tenths of a second. With that small error into the fifth corner. Six tenths of a separate. Suz and Mikel Pons. I don't think this one's over by any way, shape or form. I think we've still got to be on it. And we're actually losing more time. Mikel Pons. He's two and a half tenths of a second. And if you listen clo closely, you can just hear his bike in the background. He could be closing in sooner or later. <laughs> oh, this is not over yet. Pressure is on for the number 47. How's your nerves, Dr. Ace? 
Oh, 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 oh. This one could be challenging. Coming out of Duca's loot. I think Pons is going to be close enough. He's got to tackle it properly, though. So many times he's had an opportunity and he's blown it. Real life as well, but unfortunately, here he goes and he's up on the inside. Oh, for goodness sake, Mikel. <laughs> oh, my goodness, he took out Egeter. He took out Egeter, he took out a Canopa. Good Lord. What a blunder. That's a blunder and a half, that is, ladies and gentlemen. I knew he was coming, I knew he was going to go through, but... It's, it's just happening too often. That could have been one hell of a fight for the victory here, but unfortunately, Pons has thrown it to the scenery. So we now have a second advantage to Hector Garso. We're on the penultimate lap here in Aston. I think this one's done and dusted, ladies and gentlemen. We could be looking at 25 more points for our championship challenge. Can't really do any better than that, can you? And the chips are down. We've responded well. Tenth and a little bit gained again. We're losing a bit of time to our fastest lap, but we did have a pretty solid pace earlier on. Not able to get back into the 139s, which is a shame. But uh, bigger picture, ladies and gentlemen. Bigger picture is the World Championship, or the Moto E World Cup, as they call it. Just, uh, just notice, though, ca catching a little glimpse. Struggling a bit on this lap time, taking it a bit too tentatively, as a matter of fact. And Matteo Ferrari... Just breached a second advantage there, a disadvantage, should I say. Eight tenths, seven tenths. Ooh, we, oh, we'll have to pay attention to this. The medium rear is getting a bit warm and it's just slipping and sliding around. This may not be over yet. I don't want to get your hopes up just in case. But it certainly isn't if you look at the standings. You look at that timing. He's not that far away. Could Ferrari be really... Chucking in something incredible here for the final part. I've gone deep into the gear to Chicane. I've had to take to the across the line there. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be it. Matteo Ferrari is going to take us to the distance. That's a shocking lap time. That's one, one of the worst lap times we've done around here. This could be very interesting now, guys. This is it. Ferrari is within two tenths of a second. Also broken has now been tackled for the final lap here in Assen. Garso's got to be with Matteo Ferrari as well. Surely he didn't get dropped. Good line into... Oh, it's a Kubu now into top three. There is Ferrari. Seen him on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Kakuma's back into the podium positions. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a race in our hand. Don't count anyone out in this one. This could go right down to the wire. Now to the left-hand side of the Russian. That's a little bit deep. Matteo Ferrari on cue. Here he comes. We are big. I don't know what it is, what we're struggling with so much. I think it's the rear tyre. Might have been a gamble with the medium as I thought it would be, but it looks fine. It just doesn't feel very good. Now into DeBolt for turn nine. We've tackled the most difficult corner. Now it's time to hopefully fend off Ferrari. He's through. This is not going as planned, but we'll squeeze back up the inside. And hopefully we hold on to the line. Dukas Loot's been good for us there. Now into 12, we'll now go to 13, then to the Ramshuk, and then into the gear to Misha Kane. Is it enough for us to hold on? Ferrari, he's, oh, that's aggressive. No way. Ferrari, do we try a last lunge a crawl around the outside? Is it enough? It is. Oh, what a move. I may have lost the lead on the final lap, but what a retaliation to secure victory here in Assen. Well, I absolutely love that. I know I made a couple of mistakes in the final lap there, which allowed him to come back, but whoa, we got it done. We got it done. So we win the race ahead of Ferrari, and Akaria Kubu takes third position. So let's take a look at the championship standings. We do extend our lead now to 41 points and clear from Kubu, and 59 clear from Eric Granado. Not looking too bad for the championship standings. Look at the team's championship, and so far we are pretty much dominating this one i think we've got this one in the bag but guys thanks for watching as always i do hope you enjoyed the video see you tomorrow for the next round and i guess that's it from me so like comment and subscribe and consider becoming a member of the dot trace pit crew thanks for watching guys see you in the next one ciao for now oh hi didn't quite see you there Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description.
consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Doctor Ace video.